How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting over not walking. It's rough. It's got to be hard because you are such a physical comedian. It's frustrating as hell. But uh, like my daughter said, Dad, would you have liked not to make 90? I said, no, I'm very happy about it. He's a bit less mobile now. But for Jerry Lewis, not walking doesn't mean not working. In his latest film, Max Rose, he's a retired jazz artist coming to terms with his wife's passing. And I never told you, Ava, but you breathe nicer than anyone I've ever known in my life. Why Max Rose? I fell in love with the material. Vonnegut is on Charlie Rose tonight. That man is a horse's ass. In this role, his facial expressions say it all. Then again, they always have. The typewriter scene from 1963's Who's Minding the Store is a good example. Jerry Lewis made more than five dozen sight gag heavy films by himself and as half of what was once the most popular comedy team on the planet. Here comes the bang. Oh, what a sight to see. Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin first teamed up in 1946, post-war New York. I fell in love with him the day we met. You want to come up for coffee? And within weeks, they were selling out shows with their own brand of sex appeal and slapstick. Why are you waiting? I forgot what song we were singing. <laughs> For you and Dean, it almost seemed like anarchy. Is that the right way to describe it? Yeah, pretty good. That's as good an ex explanation as I've ever heard. I loved him so much. And I knew how much he loved me. Jesus Christ, I'm telling you stuff I haven't talked about in 50 years. Thank you. We were both six feet tall. I took his shoes one day and put lifts on him so that he would be a little taller than me. Because you thought that was better for the bit if well, you looked oh yeah. younger. You can't do that unless you're feeling it. But after a nonstop decade together, they weren't feeling it anymore. The two parted ways in 1956 and wouldn't even speak to each other for nearly 20 years. You said you loved each other. Did you still love each other when you split up? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. It just was time? It, it was time for us both. My head keeps spinning. I go to sleep and keep grinning. Martin, of course, hit new heights on his own. Beginning. My life is going to be beautiful. You rude, discourteous, ego. And Lewis became a top box me, right? office and draw. I understand it. Only this morning, looking in the mirror before shaving, I enjoyed seeing what I saw so much I couldn't tear myself away. Have some, baby? Yeah. Under his direction, slapstick comedy became performance art. Young man, that vase is worth $7,000. For this scene in 1964's The Patsy, he broke hundreds of vases, training himself to catch them just before they hit. Lewis, who learned his craft on the fly by watching people on movie sets, that is a simple way to remember. Wound up teaching a film goes. class to grad students at the University of Southern California. Any questions? Who was in your class? I had Steven Spielberg. About 12 guys from a class of 60 made it in the big, in the bigs, we called it. The really bigs. The bigs, yeah. I'm going to work, dude. All right, places, please. And in 1960, he made another, lesser-known contribution to filmmaking, video assist, that is, instant video replay of a movie scene after a take. Today, it's something directors can't live without. The video assist was invented by Jerry because nobody had any idea what they were getting until the operator blessed it or until the operator critiqued it. There should be a sign, you know, saying, <laughs> 
Jerry Lewis invented this. I got my education from film people. But today, in Jerry's Las Vegas home, the Oscar that sits atop his TV isn't for technical achievement or a specific film. It's the Academy's Humanitarian Award for his other career. One more. Go, Tiffany! For millions, it just wasn't Labor Day until Jerry hit his number on the Muscular Dystrophy Telethon, which he hosted from 1966 to 2010. You raised an incredible amount of money. I'll give you an exact figure. Two billion, seven hundred million accounted for. I think you're so adorable. The money led to research and longer lifespans for MD patients, but it didn't buy a cure. And at times, Lewis could only watch as the disease claimed another of his kids. The days and hours I spent in hospital hallways waiting for the answer to this child, is he going to live or die? And I took it very personal. Each one. How could he die? Look at the work I've done. And what do we do with all that money? Why don't we use it to help him? How do you answer that? You don't. You don't. Oh, God almighty. I could, I could write a book on children's reactions to meeting their clown. One child says to the coordinator, if I didn't get muscular dystrophy, I'd have never met him. Oh, my goodness. And then these children look at you like you're some kind of god. I'm not a god. I just love people, and I love people that are well. I don't like to see someone sick. The MDA telethon had its critics, but also had its moments. And one of the greatest happened 40 years ago today, September 4th, 1976, when Frank Sinatra brought out a mystery guest. Would you send my friend out, please? Okay, where, okay, where is he? Would you send him out here? Come here. Did you have any idea what he was up to? Everybody knew but me. All right, all right, break it up, break it up. Martin and Lewis never did get their old act back together, not even after this. Uh, so you working? But they stayed close until Dean Martin died on Christmas Day in 1995. You can't write love off or put it on hold. It stays with you until death. And I don't know, it doesn't continue. That's the thing. Do you still think about Dean now? Oh, sure. There isn't a day I don't think about him. And the fact that he left and died, I can't believe how bad I was that he died on me. I knew he would do it. <laughs> so uh, I have to ask you this question. You working? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Christ, all the time. Do you know what a wrench is, sir? A wrench? That's where Jewish cowboys live, a wrench. The twice married father of seven is still performing live with no plans to quit. Is there a goal you have now? I want to live a little You want to live longer. a little? Live a little longer? Yeah. What's a little longer? Well, I'm 90. I figure maybe four or five would be nice. In the twilight of an unforgettable life, all Jerry Lewis really wants is a little bit more.